Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Austin James Jackson. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you guys about the best noise reduction software in 2022. I've tested a whole lot of them. Last year, I did a whole video testing a bunch of different softwares with the same image and I found out which one I think works the best. That is the same software that is continuing to be the best in 2022 and it's even better now for night photos, daytime photos, anything high noise. The software is amazing. That software is Topaz Denoise AI and I'm going to show you guys how to use it in this video and why it's so powerful. I've got four different example images. I've got a really, really high noise, 32,000 ISO to be exact. Then I've got a regular Milky Way shot. I've got a low light image after dark, and then I've got a daytime photo that is a relatively high ISO. We're going to test all of them, and I'm going to give you guys a little hint here. This software works great on every single one of them, so I want to show you guys how it works and why it works, and then that way you guys can be more informed so you guys can think about picking up this software. Uh, I know right now it is on sale for the next couple weeks if you're watching this video when it first comes out, so do pick it up if you want. I've got a link down below where you can pick it up. But go ahead and check out this video first. Make sure that this software is right for you before you do. Let's go ahead and jump right in there. I'll show you guys exactly how Topaz Denoise AI works. So one of the main reasons why this software is so powerful is because you can launch it from almost any photo editor. Right here you can see I've got my photo in Lightroom. I'm going to show you guys how to launch it from Lightroom because that's how I normally do it. But if you're using On One, Capture One, Luminar, any of the common editing suites, there's usually going to be a pretty easy way to use Topaz Denoise as a plugin. This is the first photo we're going to show here and it's definitely an extreme example, but I want to show you a really extreme example first and then I'll show you a couple more simple examples. This photo you can see is ISO 32,000, not 3,200, that's 32,000 with three zeros. Uh, and you can see it is quite noisy here, very, very noisy. So let's see how this software does with something like this. Now we're going to uh, select the photo here in our time strip and I'm going to control click or right click if you're on a PC. And we're going to go to edit in and we're going to go down to Topaz Denoise AI. Now you can edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. These are the settings that I like to use. And you can go ahead and hit edit. Now this is going to load the software into Topaz Denoise, which will then allow us to apply the noise reduction. Now the really, really cool thing about this is that once you're done, you can click save and send it right back over into Lightroom and continue your edit there or Photoshop or any other software that you're using. Now you can see when the program first launches, it does launch pretty fast on my computer. Uh, it's gonna launch you in this single view. First thing I like to do here is to select the split view and then you can move this line in the middle to see the before and after. It's already looking really good. Now you can go over to the AI model and all of these little lightning bolts with the sliders next to them, if you slide that to the right and the lightning bolt turns yellow, essentially you are telling the software that you would like the software to decide um, what model it's going to use and what preferences it's going to use. I always use it for the model preference and I rarely ever use it for AI model. You can see it's on already. I always choose the AI model. So for the AI model, we've got options between standard, clear, low light, severe noise, and raw. Don't worry too much about raw. That's something that you do if you're using it on a raw image before you do any editing, which I usually do not do. Um, but we've got the other four options. Standard is going to be great for things where maybe it's a daytime photo and it's not that noisy, but you just kind of want to clean it up a little bit before you print it or post it to the web or whatever. Clear is great for times where you have like a sky or something that's not very detailed that you just want to be clear and smooth. Low light is obviously good for low light scenarios and severe noise is good for anything that has a lot of noise like this image that I'm working with right now. So I've selected severe noise and I've went ahead and turned on the automatically detect here, which allows us to remove noise and enhance sharpness and the software automatically chose 80 and 27. And I actually think it looks pretty good. You can see as we scroll this, it keeps all of the details. Now I took this photo uh, out on one of my last workshops and the one thing that tells me that it's keeping a lot of detail is that you can even still see the like string or the uh, wire from the shutter release here with this noise reduction. So obviously there's a lot of noise reduction softwares out there. Not all of them are going to do nearly this good of a job. The really nice thing about this software is you can see it's keeping a lot of the details. A lot of noise reductions will reduce the details and it's just not gonna look good. Uh, whereas this one seems to do a good job keeping the details. You can see if I click on the image here or over here on the navigator, I can scroll around and I can find different spots on the image if I wanna sample them. Every time you move the 
every time you pan the image, uh, you do need to let it reload to update for the noise profile which is not a problem, uh, but it does take some time. You can also go up here to the magnifying glass if you wanted to zoom in more or less, and you could change that there. Now you can see over here, it looks good again. It's looking really good. So uh, one other cool thing I wanna show you guys before we move on to the next photo is this comparison view. This comparison view is great for times where you wanna compare multiple different options. By default, it's gonna load um, severe noise, clear, low light, and then another severe noise. And this way I can compare all four. This would be really helpful if you don't know exactly which model is gonna work best. You can try all four and see which one works. Now the cool thing is if I wanted to go click on this severe noise, I could change the settings and then compare it to the other ones again. So you can go in and individually change the settings on each of these and go from there. However, uh, on this photo, the severe noise does look the best, but I did just wanna show you that this is an option. So let's go ahead and look at another photo that maybe isn't quite so noisy. So this is another low light example, but it's not quite as extreme. This one's at ISO 800. When we zoom in here, you can see that it is a little bit noisy, but it's not too bad, but you can use the software to easily clean up a lot of photos that are noisy like this one, where it's not too terrible, but you do just wanna make a little bit cleaner of an image. So let's go ahead and open this here. I'm gonna control click, I'm gonna go to edit in and we're gonna go down to Topaz Denoise AI and we're going to hit edit. Now we're gonna let that load out and Topaz Denoise is gonna reopen again. All right, now this is opened here. Uh, we're gonna to go to low light and in a situation like this, you may need to zoom in a little bit more on photos that aren't super noisy. So I might go to 200% here and I wanna look at an area that might have some details. So this girl here on the bike will have a little bit of details and I do wanna to go to the side-by-side -side view like usual, or I mean the split view rather. You can do the side-by-side -side view if you want, but I do like the split view so I can move it back and forth. And again, I've used the uh, automatically detect the AI technology to sense about where we should be for noise reduction and you can see it pretty much does a perfect job. I mean, that photo looks highly detailed, no noise at all. It's done a really nice job. And you can see all that I did is just a couple clicks in here. Uh, it automatically selected to remove noise and enhance the sharpness. It auto also automatically selected these options. Uh, I chose low light, but I could click this and let it detect uh, what it should use. We'll try that and see if it comes out better. Uh, and this also looks like it came out pretty good. So. Just totally up to you as to which one you want to use, um, but you can uh, usually select the AI model and that's usually what I like to do. And then I will I'll let it automatically remove the noise and enhance the sharpness. Of course, if you look at this and you decide that you want it to be sharper or less noisy, you can adjust these settings afterwards, but I do recommend hitting this box and letting it load out to begin with. So I wanna show another example here. For those of you guys that aren't out shooting in the dark or in low light situations, you still might have noisy photos. In this photo, you can see I shot ISO 3200. I was trying to keep that shutter speed fast because the leaves around me were moving. You can see it's pretty noisy. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what Topaz can do for us. I'm gonna go Control. I'm gonna go to Edit In and go down to Topaz Denoise AI and click Edit. We'll let that load out and see how well it does. All right, now that this loaded in, I'm going to select standard. Um, you can see that it automatically detected that it should use standard, so I'm just gonna leave it on like that. And you can see the default settings here actually aren't doing exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and try low light and see if that does a little bit better. Actually, better yet, let's just do the comparison view so that we can see all of the different options here that are presented to us and see which one looks the best. You can see they do work one at a time here. So you do have to wait for each one to load through. And you can see actually that severe noise, I think, is looking the best. And I accidentally moved it around there. That is the one thing that can get kind of annoying every time you move it, it does have to re-render. I understand why it does that though, because it doesn't want to render the whole photo. Um, but that is one thing to keep in mind that every time you move it, it will have to re-render all of them. I'm gonna go to severe noise here. And now we can open it up and we can make additional changes if we want. So that's one situation where it's really, really nice to do compare um, and do the comparison view rather. And then we can see all of the images at once so that we can decide which one is the best. You can see it looks pretty good. It doesn't really, in my eyes, I don't see any detail that it has removed from my scene and it looks great. So 
That's looking really good on severe noise. Well, here I want to show one photo that's ISO 6400, just your standard Milky Way photo, not stacked, not tracked, just 6425 seconds, your regular Milky Way photo. Let's see how well the Topaz Denoise stacks up. Again, we're going to go down here. We're going to control click and we're going to go to edit in and we're going to go to Topaz Denoise. And I did say in a video that I made last year when I was comparing lots of different softwares that Topaz did not work well for night photos. However, they've either updated it or I found a little bit better way to use it. And it definitely works really well for night photos now uh, when you are using the right settings, when you're using that severe noise or low light, it does work really, really well. So I wanna show you guys how effective it can be here on these night photos. Let's go low light and we'll try that first and we'll see how that looks. And let's scroll over to, yeah, let's just look at the Milky Way right now. We'll scroll over right there and you can see we've got the automatically detect uh, the recommended settings for this image on again and we'll let this load out and see how it does. And of course, we're looking for something that's not going to cut away from our stars or reduce the detail in our scene. And you can see that low light is looking all right. And maybe I'll do the comparison view again. And let's just see what all four of them look like. Now for the actual sky portion, clear might look really good because we want it to be smooth. You can see clear is looking pretty good. So one thing that you can do if you wanna spend a lot of time is you can do uh, one for the sky and then one for the foreground separately. You can see how on clear, the stars do look a little bit sharper than they do in severe noise. Let's look at the foreground though and see how that looks because usually clear is not what you wanna use for foreground where there's some kind of detail in it. But like I said, if you're willing to spend the time, you can do a separate denoise for the sky and for the foreground. You can see the rock is really, really smooth here. We've lost a lot of the contrast. So for that reason, severe noise might be good. Now this looks really good on this image. And honestly, I could see myself using this image without even stacking them in a starry landscape stacker like most night photographers do. So that will save you a lot of time if you can just use one exposure and stack it here. So that is kind of my thoughts on Topaz Denoise. Hopefully these four examples helped you to see the difference in different kinds of photos and how it works and how easily and effectively it works. Thank you guys so much for checking this video out. Like I mentioned before, I did make a video last year where I tested Topaz Denoise AI against a couple other softwares. If you wanna see that video, I will link it again right here. But I'm gonna tell you guys that Topaz Denoise AI is way better than any other software that I've ever tried. You guys have gotta pick it up and if it's still on sale, pick it up while it is because it is seriously the best noise reduction software. You cannot go wrong with it. I've used it on all different kinds of landscape and nature photos at all times of the day and night and it just works fantastic and it's super, super easy to use. If you guys are gonna pick up the software, I've got a link down below where you can pick it up. Like I said, I'd highly recommend it and if you have any any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Or if you have any experience using Topaz Denoise AI or any other noise reduction software, let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.